four studio albums, 49 music videos, two EPs, 53 singles, 12 mixtapes, and one collaboration album. Among these, numerous platinum and gold records. This is the legacy of what may be the most successful rap group of all time, Migos. They have shaped and altered the rap game in their unique way. Today's video will unveil their journey to this legendary status. The rap group consists of three members. The eldest, Quavo, a.k.a. Quavius Kiate Marshall, born on April 2, 1991. Kiari Kendrill Cephas, known as Offset, born on December 14, 1991. And the youngest, Kersnik Kariball, a.k.a. Takeoff, born on June 18, 1994. All three are related. Quavo is Takeoff's mother's brother, making him Takeoff's uncle, and Offset is a cousin to both. Quavo's father passed away when he was only four years old, and both Offset's and Takeoff's fathers abandoned them at a very young age. As a result, they grew up together under one roof, raised by Quavo's mother. They were raised in Gwinnett County, an affluent suburb about 30 minutes from Atlanta. Their influences include Outkast, Gucci Mane, Hot Boys, and Master P. Migos greatly respect the old school of hip-hop, something not everyone may realize, but it's true. The first among them to start making music and rapping was Take off. He began producing and rapping in seventh grade, with Quavo following soon after. At the time, Quavo was a talented football player, participating in various high school teams and making notable achievements. It was during this period that he also rapped and even released music, distributing it to his classmates under the name Crunk Boy. This was all in eighth grade. However, his classmates didn't take him seriously, mocking his lines and making fun of him. Offset's experience was different. He fully supported Quavo, insisting that his work was simply fire. Just months before graduating, Quavo left school. He then teamed up with his nephew to form their own rap group. They called themselves Polo Club, simply because everyone in Atlanta was wearing polo shirts at that time. Offset's journey into rap began a bit later. Despite this, he had a special connection to music from childhood being a highly talented dancer, even performing in a Whitney Houston music video in 2002. It was through his cousins, Takeoff and Quavo, that Offset ventured into rapping. Quavo wrote his first verse, and when Offset tried rapping, he realized he could do it too. Thus, the trio was formed around 2008. The area where they grew up wasn't particularly tough, and they didn't hide this fact. Quavo once mentioned that the three teenagers made life difficult for themselves, choosing to be involved with the streets. Eventually, they lived together in a bando, a term in trap slang for an abandoned house, which they used as a trap house, cooking and selling drugs. According to Offset, this life was merely part of a business plan, aiming to build capital to kickstart their careers. In this bando, there was an old TV running 24-7. It's no surprise then that in their first tracks, in their first two mixtapes, there were several references to old TV shows. The first two mixtapes were titled Jerk Season, which came out in 2011, and No Label, which was released in 2012. By this time, they were already known as Migos. Regarding the group's name, I found two meanings in my research. The first is that in trap slang, Migos refers to Atlanta, a key location in drug trafficking with various Latin American countries, hence the name. However, other sources claim that the group named themselves after the high Latino population in their neighborhoods, with the comedy Free Latinos being the inspiration for their name. Honestly, both explanations seem plausible. Migos often gave out drinks to DJs at local parties just so they would play their songs, helping more people discover their music. This strategy quickly built them a name in Atlanta's underground scene. They also posted videos on YouTube where they rapped into the camera and did some freestyling, all in 2012. 
Their first major breakthrough came with the song Bando from the No Label mixtape. which caught the attention of Atlanta's legendary producer Zaytoven. By then, Zaytoven was already well known, having worked with Gucci Mane. Zaytoven showed the track to Coach K, the manager of Jeezy and Gucci Mane, who immediately recognized Migos' potential. This led to Gucci Mane discovering the group, inviting them to his studio for six straight weeks, where some legendary singles were likely produced. Gucci even offered them a label deal with 1017, but they turned it down, choosing quality control instead. On October 1, 2013, the music video for Versace was released, Migos' first big hit. Quavo was prominent in the mainstream, although Offset was incarcerated at the time due to charges of burglary and theft from committing auto theft. Remarkably, Drake jumped on the Versace remix, a significant endorsement, as featuring Drake means you've made it. Migos brought a fresh style to the scene, particularly with their triple rhymes in Versace, reminiscent of 3-6 Mafia's flows, sparking a new trend. Suddenly everyone was rapping like Migos. The song was on YRN, a tape released on June 13, 2013 which was later ranked 38th in that year's best albums. Hannah Montana, another track from the tape, was also a huge success. Afterward, it was clear Migos were in hustle mode, releasing two collaboration tapes with Rich the Kid and one with several other quality control artists within the same year. In 2014, they entered the US album charts with No Label 2. The most famous track from this tape was Fight Night. Which, according to my research, was their first single to go gold. Here, Takeoff really proved himself in the mainstream. In March 2014, there was a shooting in Miami involving the group after a club show. While in a van, a car pulled up and opened fire. Reportedly shooting 40 rounds at the van, but miraculously, no one was injured. 2014 saw more projects, including one with Gucci Mani, the third part of the Streets on Lock series with Rich the Kid and the RNT tape. It didn't take long before the first real rap beef emerged. They had it with Chief Keef. This feud even escalated to murder threats and a chain snatching incident where Cuevo's chain was stolen. Truly messed up, this whole beef actually deserves its own video. If you're interested, I can make one about it. Then came 2015 a year of several highs, but also some lows. They made headlines in March 2015 when a concert erupted into violent clashes where people were stabbed, beaten, and robbed. It's alleged that Migos were to blame because they missed an autograph session where several fans were waiting and reportedly showed up very late, at least to the performance. So, the atmosphere was quite tense. According to reports, Migos even encouraged people to fight. But these are just claims. What really happened is known only by those who were actually there. A month later, in March, all three Migos members were arrested on the campus of Southern Georgia University for drug possession and carrying a weapon on school property. Offset faced an additional charge for carrying a weapon as a convicted felon. Later, Quavo and Takeoff were granted bail of $10,000 each, but not Offset. He had to remain in custody until December of that year. He was only released after pleading guilty and receiving a sentence of five years probation. That same year, they released quite a bit of music. Four mixtapes and an EP were dropped, plus their debut album titled Wyren or Young Rich Nation. It sold just under 15,000 units in its first week, debuting at number 17 on the US charts. Not a bad performance for a debut album. Quite good, actually. However, some people expected more, so this album is considered a flop by some. But that's entirely subjective. In the same year, a trend went viral that all of you should remember. The Dab Dance. Migos may not have invented the dance, but they contributed to its viral spread. The track, 
Look at my dab from the mixtape back to the bando came out at just the right time. This association made the dance even more viral. Connecting it strongly with Migos, a smart marketing move for sure. Then came 2016, a year when Migos truly took everything by storm. On October 31, 2016, the track Bad and Bougie was released, featuring Lil Uzi, and it went in suddenly viral. It hit number one on the charts, accumulated over a billion clicks on YouTube, and suddenly the whole world was listening to Migos. However, one member was missing from this track, Take Off. The reason is simple. The track was recorded and released quickly, so Take Off wasn't included. It had nothing to do with him being removed or anything like that, despite the rumors. And this extremely viral track was on an album that, in my opinion, is definitely a classic today. Culture. Arguably the best Migos album. So we can discuss in the comments which Culture album is the best, but Culture 1 has achieved legendary status. Dude, the songs on this album were such bangers. And thanks to these tracks, Migos managed to sell over 134,000 units in the first week of this album's release. Thus, for the first time, they charted at number one with an album. Culture was released in 2017, and in that same year, there were several confrontations I'll now list for you. There was the beef and fight with XX Extentacion. There was a confrontation with Joe Budden, offset through a super punch at a live show, just out into the audience. There was a fight involving Offset and Quavo against a two-meter tall guy, and there was a fight against Chris Brown, the guys were definitely wild in 2017. The following year, in 2018, came the successor to Culture, Culture 2. Another strong release with legendary songs. Culture 3R was supposed to come out right in 2019. However, the album got delayed for various reasons, including the COVID-19 pandemic, and it wasn't released until 2021. My personal favorite track on that tape was I Need It with NBA Youngboy. But still, I think this part is definitely the weakest album of the series. The Migos are no longer known just as a group. Each of the three members has managed to stand out as individual artists and release their projects. Offset released Without Warning, a collaboration tape with 21 Savage and Metro Boomin. He also released his solo album Father of Four which charted at number four, definitely delivering strong work. Quavo released Huncho Jack, Jack Huncho, a collab tape with Travis Scott, which charted at number three. He also brought out his solo album, Quavo Huncho, which charted at number two. Takeoff released an album too, The Last Rocket, which charted at number four and is, in my opinion, even the best solo album of the three. Each was doing his thing, which is not at all reprehensible but there were ongoing rumors before the release of Culture 3, suggesting that Migos might have split up. In 2022, this was confirmed when Quavo and Takeoff continued to work together as a duo without offset. This wasn't about label issues or anything like that. It definitely had a personal aspect, especially since Quavo mentioned that the split had something to do with loyalty. On October 7th, 2022, Only Built for Infinity Links was released, this is a collaboration album by Takeoff and Quavo, the first without Offset. Personally, I found that this tape was Takeoff's chance to really shine and prove that he might be the strongest of Migos. In the meantime, Offset had already announced his next solo project. As you all know, something very unexpected and terrible happened on November 1st. Takeoff was shot and killed during an altercation in Houston. An unintended murder, as Takeoff wasn't the intended target of the bullets, he died in Quavo's arms, and the alleged murderer is currently free, having been granted a $1 million bond. The entire rap community was in complete shock. Numerous stars appeared at the memorial service in Atlanta to pay their last respects to Takeoff. Naturally, Quavo and Offset were there too. Gucci Mane released a very emotional track in memory of Takeoff, and so did Quavo. 
Check out these tracks if you haven't already, they are truly very emotional. Publicly, Cuevo and Offset were not seen reconciling. Of course, we don't know what's happening behind the scenes, but I guess both are now spending a lot of time with their families, as they've lost a very close friend and family member. Currently, there's no news of new music from either of them. Unfortunately, the Migos as a collective will never exist again. That was the story of Migos. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to comment and rate the video as you can support me immensely. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Goodbye.